The Blade Runner franchise will be getting new content soon. After the highly acclaimed Blade Runner 2049, as well as the 1982 classic and three short films, a dedicated anime series is coming soon. It has been known for years that Black Lotus is definitely coming, though an initial batch of voice actors has finally been announced for the anime. As you would expect from a true anime, there's of course a Japanese voice cast list, but for the sake of convenience and above all familiarity, we will only cover the US dubbing. Featured will be Jessica Hanwig as the main character L, Will Yun Lee as the mysterious Joseph, Samira Wiley as LAPD recruit Ellen Davis, Brian Cox as Wallace Corporation CEO Nyanda Wallace Sr., Josh Duhamel as Blade Runner Malo, Barghad Abdi as dealer Doc Badger, Henry Cherney as medical professor Dr. M, and many, many more. The story stretches over a total of 13 episodes and despite the most familiar characters, you still cannot really figure out the plot. Nevertheless, we won't have to wait very long for further information as Blade Runner Black Lotus will have its own panel at this year's virtual San Diego Comic Con at the end of the month. Last year's comic book adaption, The Old Guard, released on Netflix, received mostly positive reviews from fans and critics alike and was even ranked among the streaming provider's top 10 most-watched films. In an interview with Variety, leading actress Charlize Theron has now revealed that shooting for the sequel is already planned to begin in early 2022. She also confirmed the comeback of the couple Joe and Nikki, who will be played by Marvin Kanzari and Luca Marinelli. Part 2 script was lead written by Greg Rucka and is even set to be completed, while Gina Prince Bythewat is back in charge of directing. She already announced quite some time ago that she found the approach of the comics to be brilliant and that she would like to keep her scripts close to the original. Well, not a bad idea. After all, Greg Rucka is not only the screenwriter, but also the author of the comics of the same name. We're looking forward to next year's shooting as well as an exciting sequel about the almost immortal warriors. The MCU has many enemies. DC, Martin Scorsese, Francis Ford Coppola, and above all, toys. The latter in particular has ensured that fans around the globe are now aware of Peter Parker's new suits, a returning character, and a scene from the upcoming film. So, those of you who do not wish to be spoiled regarding the aforementioned things should skip this news now. The League is about a Lego set that features the protagonists in Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum. Besides MJ and Spider-Man, you can also of course recognize Doctor Strange as well as Wong. It was sort of obvious that Strange would appear in the upcoming film, but we're also looking forward to at least a brief appearance by Wong. The scenery on the Lego packaging where you can see Wong in the claws of a strange creature could indicate an appearance of Scorpion, as was already teased in the credits after Spider-Man Homecoming. Since all this information, which should not have come to light, has now been leaked, Marvel themselves stepped up and revealed the official pop figures from Funko on their website. The figure of Spider-Man is particularly meaningful, as apparently the friendly neighborhood spider can perform magic in No Way Home. At least that's what the two spheres on his suit suggest, which are strongly reminiscent of Doctor Strange in terms of design. The latter, of course, also gets his own figure, although it raises a few more questions. Doctor Strange is seen holding a strange shovel, which we really haven't figured out yet why. Also in Funko's lineup is a red and black Spider-Man figure and a black and gold figure. Likewise, Hasbro is rolling out some new toys, and those are interesting to look at as well. In addition to Doctor Strange and J. Jones Jameson, we also see new Spider-Man suits here. One is black with light gold tones and will presumably be used in the fight against Vulture. Another one from Hasbro is the red and gold one, and it's almost certainly Spider-Man's main suit in No Way Home. It looks a bit like a cross between the suit Peter tailored in Far From Home using his portable workbench and the Iron Spider suit. Especially the big golden logo on the chest is pretty close to the Iron Spider logo from the comics. Quite a lot of input, but since both Hasbro and Funko have the black and gold and the red and black suit in their respective toys, chances are that we can look forward to an appearance of both outfits. About the first trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home, which really can't be long in coming, and we are eagerly awaiting the release date of December 17th, 2021. The Netflix blockbuster Army of the Dead has barely been released, but there's new material on the prequel already. As you can guess from the title, zombies don't play a role in this movie, instead the story of the German safecracker Ludwig Dieter will be told. Leading actor Matthias Schweighofer, who already starred in Army of the Dead, not only plays Ludwig Dieter, he also serves as the director. What the activities look like in front of the camera can be seen in five pictures, which not only show the main character, 
but also the five-person ensemble of thieves. In addition to Schweiker for the cast also includes Jonathan Cohn, Natalie Emmanuel, Ruby Ophay, Gus Kahn, Stuart Martin, and Naomi Nakai. According to Netflix, the film is even set to be released soon, but the streaming giant has not yet revealed the exact date. Zack Snyder can hardly come to rest lately. After his success with Justice League, Snyder Cut and the zombie blockbuster Army of the Dead, he is now not only producing Army of Thieves, but on top of that he's working on his new Netflix project Rebel Moon. The new movie doesn't have a lot to do with zombies or superheroes anymore, instead it goes high up. In fact, it goes very high up, because Rebel Moon is about a peaceful colony on the outer reaches of our galaxy that is being terrorized by the villain Belisarius. The only salvation for the defenseless people seems to be a young woman with a mysterious past, and so they sent her out to recruit militant support on the neighboring planet. Director and producer Snyder not only contributes to the script himself, but he also calls in his old companions Shay Hatton and Kurt Johnstadt. The former also worked on the screenplay of Army of the Dead, while Johnstadt collaborated on the classic 300. Shooting is scheduled to begin relatively soon, following the completion of the script at the beginning of next year. Keanu Reeves is currently shooting the fourth John Wick movie in Berlin. Now the British Schindler's List actor Liam Neeson is also in the German capital city. The now 69-year-old is currently shooting his thriller Retribution at Studio Babelsberg. In terms of content, the film is a remake of the Spanish thriller El Desconocido, which was released in 2015. As the main character, Neeson plays a banker living in Berlin who is suddenly notified by a mysterious caller that there's a bomb in his car. In order to save his children, who are sitting in the car also, he must raise a huge sum of money on short notice and that before the bomb goes off. Also starring our Stranger Things star Matthew Modine and Succession actor Arian Moeid, among others. In terms of content, the story is somewhat reminiscent of the 1994 film Speed, where due to ransom demand, the protagonists also have to drive for dear life in a public bus that is loaded with a bomb. In any case, we are looking forward to Liam Neeson's retribution. Hopefully the release date will be announced soon. The video game franchise The Last of Us from Naughty Dog has been one of the most important and best titles of two console generations since its release. Fans of the games are all the more excited about the upcoming HBO series about Joel and Ellie. Filming began a few days ago, and appropriately enough, there is a first peek at the cast. You can see Pedro Pascal as the main character Joel, Gabriel Luna as his brother Tommy, and the newly added Nico Parker as Joel's daughter Sarah. Naturally, this constellation and especially Tommy's car setting immediately bring traumatic scenes to the minds of video game veterans, as similar scenes are also played out at the beginning of the first The Last of Us part. In the prologue, Joel, Tommy, and Sarah try to escape from the newly emerging mushroom epidemic, and in doing so, they make their way to the city in Tommy's car. We do not want to spoil what happens after that, but just so you know, there will hardly be a dry eye left. Unfortunately, we can't give you any details about the start of the HBO series yet, but a release before the beginning of 2023 is unlikely, given that shooting will take more than a year.